Does anybody choose to make any public comment at this point? Hearing none and sensing none. Uh, presentation and or resolution items. Presentation by the Computer Center on preparing paperless agendas. Good afternoon, Judge Commissioners. I'm just going to take the time to uh, go over a, a brief presentation that we prepared on the uh, electronic agenda. I know it's not showing on y'all's. Is it showing now? Yeah. Okay, it is showing on the screens. I know earlier it wasn't showing on there. Kind of titled it here, Electronic Agenda for Cameron County. Some of the goals we set forth will go ahead and to reduce the use of to reduce the, the use of paper and of course reduce the cost. We also want to reduce time that we spend in creating the agenda. We want to take it to an automation, automated process. We want to incorporate new technology and we want to eliminate <clears throat> the time it takes for travel uh, by switching it to an electronic uh, delivery and of course increase the accessibility of the agenda information. <clears throat> Some of the information that we looked at that we've been researching, there are many, many software programs out there. As you can see, the two that we've kind of narrowed it down to, which are the most, that we've uh, kind of seen would be the most user friendly, would be the Quick Agenda. The, the Quick Agenda is currently actually being used by Hidalgo County. So I wanted to show that, that that's what our, one of our neighboring counties is using. Uh, Novus Agenda is another one that also was kind of stood out. It's also pretty user friendly. And of course there are other various software packages that are also being used. Uh, right now, Joe, the computer center supervisor, is at the IT conference in Austin, and he has touched base with me, and he is gathering more information on other programs for electrical agendas. Something to take into consideration in moving forward with an electronic agenda would be the hardware and the software. In having an electronic agenda, it will require the use of a scanner. My recommendation would be that some of the departments either acquire a scanner or get a one centralized scanner for the use of an electronic agenda in basically scanning any attachments to the agenda form and submitting it in an electronic fashion. The other thing would be <clears throat> that we must be able to scan everything into, a, into one acceptable format. My, my recommendation would be a PDF format and by using the PDF, PDF format, it allows us to actually bookmark and to use it as a quick reference and using Adobe Reader. Also, a recommendation would be to get some laptops or computers that we'll, you all will be able to use to see the electronic agenda. We've taken into consideration actually purchasing versus actually building some software. If we purchase the program, of course, it will allow for a quicker incorporation. We'll be able to use it and it's ready to go. Um, ready to use, we shouldn't have any problems with it. However, if we do purchase a program, we might not be able to modify the current program. In other words, we're not going to be able to use what, we've, what we're currently using, which y'all were currently seeing as far as the agenda form. That might change a little bit. So we're kind of shying away from that and trying to actually create something on our own, incorporate a few ideas, and hopefully we can modify that to where we can actually create something if we do create something, it will take some commitment from our IT staff. We will have to assign someone specifically to that project to where they can detail it and design it. Uh, there is a cost analysis that I put together. If we do initial cost, if we purchase the software, we're looking at probably about 30000 That's including software license uh, and, and a new server that we'll need to run the existing program. We'll also have the reoccurring annual maintenance fees. Uh, again, some departments will have unexpected purchases, for example, a scanner or upgrading. Some departments currently have uh, copy machines that have the scanning capability. They just need to enable that. So that's probably another added feature they'd have to put on their maintenance agreement with either whoever they're currently using, Xerox. And of course, we would need the training that would be needed for all the departments in moving forward with this. If we would create it, we would purchase Adobe 
Acrobat Professional and their licenses. Um, we would also, of course, spend some time in customizing it. And just like the other one, that if we purchase it, we would have the unexpected costs for scanners and equipment or upgrades, and of course, the training that would be needed for the departments. Um, I was going to show a quick, a quick uh, little demo that we had from a from a agenda. Quick, I'm going to skip over that. My recommendations to the course to the court in order to keep the cost down and to meet our desired goals was is to scan and organize it into an agenda as a working process, as a working document. So the person that would be in, in charge of actually working with the agenda, they would keep an open file and receive these files electronically as they would come in, download them into the Adobe Reader, the Adobe Professional, and keep working them as they come in. Uh, we would use Adobe Professional to create an agenda binder. The binder would actually keep track of all the incoming documents and put them in, put them in order for that person to use. We would keep the current, the current format, which is PDF. As the, um, as the items are added, supplemental information can be attached to them, which is fairly easy. Another recommendation would be to have uh, paper copies routed as normal. That way we would have an original copy, but instead of making copies like we currently do, we would reduce the amount of copies to just one. And of course, we would need to provide the adequate tra training to all the departments. We would want to create a uh, standard operating procedure as far as distributing it to everyone as, and following those procedures into the, uh, to the agenda. So hopefully there won't be any, any problems, but it'll take some time for everybody to get used to the process. And um, that, was, that was it of the presentation. But if anyone has any questions, please. Are there any issues with the county clerk's office in regards to electronic agendas? Uh, not that I'm aware of, and I haven't really touched base. I haven't gone that far yet, Commissioner, to meet either with Joe or, or are they in reference to that. Uh, as far as having the original paper signed and stamped, that's kind of why we wanted to keep that process the same as far as um, not having any conflicts with, uh, with the county clerk's office. Because it's going to be a little more work to route the normal paper also along. I mean, the agenda can easily be scanned. Yes. But it's going to create a little more work for someone with the paperwork associated with it. It would be right. Taking, the, taking that agenda like they would walk it through, get the normal signatures, and then either they take it back to their office for scanning would be my recommendation. That way it alleviate um, the county administrator's office of them having to actually scan those individual documents. And those are little small details that we're still kind of into trying to fine tune. But if that person gets the original signatures, then walks it back to their office for scanning or keeps a copy for themselves, would be my recommendation, and then scan that copy and deliver the other copy as they normally do, then um, it would, the person actually wouldn't have to bring the 13 copies that are required. Do you have any idea what the reoccurring annual maintenance cost would be? Not, not at this time, no, Commissioner. It, 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 it'll vary depending on, you know, different, different situations of we actually what we want them to do. I mean, it, it just, it just varies, and we haven't gone to that far. Depending, we're trying to narrow it down as to what soft, which software, which company we would go with, and then it would provide the, uh, the maintenance costs. We are, we are trying to look for something to build in house versus actually having to go out and purchase a program. Have you uh, done a, a survey or to find out which departments will have costs and which, because I, I see where you're saying some departments will have unplanned purchase of scanning equipment. And those, did those you will be the that in your presentation and I missed it? I'm sorry? Did, did you give us an idea of how many departments would have that problem? No, currently we don't know. I'm thinking, I know there's a handful of departments that actually do have scanners and there are individual uh, employees that have scanners in their office. But I'm thinking those departments that, the bigger departments that might not have a scanner, which I don't know who, who, are, who those are at this time, no, Commissioner. But we can definitely, you know, find out. What would interested in knowing mm -hmm. and also what the cost would be? Okay, definitely. I would think that at this point, uh, I think you're trying to get a, a feel for what the court really wants to do. And if, and if there's a consensus on the court, hey, go ahead and move forward and do this. Yes, Judge. Then you can start compiling, you know, what the cost is going to be. I know that I saw the $30,000 number. Yes. Uh, and there's certain things that we're going to have to do, whether we, we outsource or, or buy something off the shelf or, or we do it in-house. 
there's going to be some fixed costs that so we're going to have no matter what in terms of scanners, et cetera. So I think at this point, you just want a consensus maybe from the court to, to go to the next step to find out and really start comparing apples to apples to how much this whole process is going to cost. And again, it's something that we're going to work into over the next three to five months, right? Correct, Judge. And then maybe once you have those numbers that, that addresses Commissioner Tamayo's concerns, anybody else's as far, you know, because a lot of these departments already have scanners. Yes. And, and, and a lot of, the, a lot of the, the fax machines that are already in place have scanners. Yes. A lot of our, of our copy machines already have scanning capabilities. So, right. But I think you need to go back and inventory, you know, with the district clerk, county clerk, all our major departments, health department, jail, et cetera, right. and see which one they have. I think you're going to find that most of the departments that we have already probably have some kind of scanning capability. And a lot of the, a lot of the newer copy machines that come in, I know Xerox, they have the, the little button right. that all you have to do is press scan and it'll scan it and it'll email it right to you. They right. just need to right. So I guess the next step would be, I guess, go and try to determine exactly what, where we need to go after this today. It's just a little presentation. Yes, sir. Consent. From my position, I think that you have a lot of entities that are going into paperless agendas. Yes. Uh, you can always, if, for the media, you can always do a hard copy for them if, if, if they need one. Um, and, you know, I, I guess we're going to have to go parallel agendas for a while. You know, something that's, that, that's, on, that's on our laptop and also with a hard copy, you know, it's well, parallel systems we'll, until, we'll, until we'll we get We'll try to make it a smooth it. transition for Real everyone. smooth. Yes. Uh, I so I think, let me, let me hear a motion to acknowledge his, uh, his report. And so I guess as, as a consensus would be Second. just to continue forward in studying this issue. Yes, okay. Judge. Absolutely. Moved by Commissioner Tamayo, second by Commissioner Benavides. Any further discussion? I just wanted to say that I appreciate your work on this. I know some of us have been talking about this for at least five years uh, and trying to get away from wasting all the paper we waste and cutting down all the trees we cut down in order to provide the agendas. Uh, this to me is really the way we ought to be going and we, you know, I think we can be much more efficient this way. I think I did read a study and it's by the uh, Independent school district, Katy Independent School District, go by Houston, and their estimated costs are saving, I think, close to six thousand dollars in just paper alone, sure. on just by going to an electronic agenda. I mean, it's just, you know, it's a significant amount of money, but it is an actual cost savings. I, I would just ask that you also look at the, you know, if if we're looking at moving into this direction, that in the process of doing this. Even utilizing the scanners, is there a way that we can electronically signature capture yes. to the program yes. without yes. a scanner? Yes. Okay, so I mean, why, why are we going to the scanner? It's kind of like we're doing another step that we might not need to do. Well, the, the only reason for the scanner is if, you, if we're going to do, we can do the actual agenda format electronically. And I know the city of Brownsville, we did visit with them last week, and they showed us their process, and they do everything over the in, intranet which is a tool, you know, that we're trying to develop here locally. Um, we can create the format on a web-based, the agenda form on a web-based program to where it can be generated electronically and, and emailed. It, it would seem that that would be the direction that we need to go instead of, like, introducing another layer of technology with the scanner. And the scanners work great. Right. But, you know, you don't use them that often. And there are, there are those... There are those documents that do come in if we need to attach a contract. If we don't have it personally electronically, Probably for backup, backup. A, a backup, we would we would scan that document in right. and, and attach it as a supplement. That would be the only reason for a scanner. Yeah. I know nowadays, you know, everybody is sending contracts back and forth electronically, but if the court would require an actual uh, document or a contract with signatures, but most of the time those have been digitalized and you can just email can them because yes. most of the documents that we get are emailed documents yes. already. Right. So it would be an easy attachment to that. Right. And we can definitely streamline streamline the process and make it as cost you know cost efficient as possible. But the only the only thing for the scanner would be if if we would need to attach a supplement or or, you know, right. or a document to there that is not electronically. That would be the only they reason. Be scanned in. And they would be scanned in and, and emailed as an attachment. <laughs> so the, the county clerk's office already has electronic filing? They, there is the, the, one of the programs that, we're, um, that we have here, mm -hmm. the, uh, the Quick Agenda and the Novus, they both actually integrate that part of the, of the process. So I don't believe they actually have electronic agenda. And no, at the but, but yet a lawyer can file yeah. a lawsuit electronically now. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, so it's not any different. The but I think, isn't that in the district clerk's office, though? 
I'm, I'm sorry. That's part of the district clerk's office function, though. I don't know how uh, the uh, lawyers deal with the uh, filings in, in the county clerk's office as far as civil documents or anything like that. Yeah, but I'm saying that the process is always <laughs> in place. That's mm -hmm. why sometimes some of these off-the-shelf programs already have all the built-in components. Right. You know, Which the two that we were looking at actually do have that where it incorporates the routing, the workflow yeah. process, you know, and it shoots out the... Uh, what I can do is I can email you all a link with a demo, and it really, it really kind of sheds some light on some of these. The only thing would be the cost associated with these packages. It's going to cost one way or another because you're going to have staff working on the program. Sure. Yeah, that's Absolutely. You can't get around it. Yeah. Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Item three, consideration approval of resolution appointing a county representative to the public power pool and technical committee member. Pete, I think that we decided, no, we decided, we decided it was Commissioner Tamayo that's on there? No. Or? Aren't you on there already? No. Uh, this, I had been getting uh, mail for Valencia, Commissioner Valencia, from these people. And when I got it, it was, said, well, well the last one was, was Commissioner Valdez. No, was, Valencia. Yeah. I never got any address to Valdez. It was Valencia, and I thought, well, it's not addressed to me. I'm not going to open it. So I called Mark Yates at the time he was with us, and he said, well, just, uh, he said, oh, that has to be corrected, and he said, just send all those letters to the judge's office. So I sent them to the judge's office. I had no idea what it was. Well, let's, let's pray. It wasn't me. It wasn't my office. I, no, I've never no, seen I said, anything. Yeah, I mean, right. when I first came on board, right. okay. and, uh, and so I would send them back. Well, would you like to would you like to be appointed to uh, to represent the county on that? Have your address already. <laughs> Just change it. <laughs> well, I'll need a little bit of in service. I, I sure want to. Because of the resolution that, well. that that you got to us had uh, a resolution by the commissioner's court appointing Richard Valdez. Well, that was the last resolution the that last, we found, and, right, and I'm not sure. Resolution. Resolution. I'm not sure if that resolution ever got to them or not from okay. the county. I know the county passed it and, and signed it and everything, but if the address. Um, wasn't changed, then, then maybe it never got to them. But um, what this is, is the county belongs to this power pool, and I'm, I'm not sure the number of facilities that we have under this pool. Um, I've asked for a copy um, of, of that list from Mike Forbes, but from what I can tell you is that um, the contract ends uh, at the end of December 2008. Um, and I've had um, meetings with CPL representatives because we do have a number of other facilities that are not covered by this pool um, where we can save quite a bit of money by changing our category the way we're categorized by CPL um, and so that's an item that I'll bring uh, to you all in the future um, and then I'll also place another item to see uh, if we want to continue in this pool or not but for now we, we do need to appoint you know, one member from the court, uh, and I'm not sure if, if they have meetings. Uh, Mike Forbes apparently was a technical committee member, and he didn't know that 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 he was, you know, such a member of that technical committee. So uh, I don't know that the me, county. Let me, let me stop you right there. So even Mike didn't know. Right. So I'm not sure that the county has ever participated in a meeting or or, or conference calls. I'm not sure how they have their meetings, uh, but. There is additional information that I'm putting together that I need to come to the court and get some direction, you know, from the court. I've, I've gotten, we've gotten a copy of the contract. Legal has it, and they're reviewing it. And so, in the next uh, week or two, you know, we'll put an item back on the agenda. If the court wants to table this item until I come back with that information, we can do that. Or if y'all want to appoint uh, a member from the court, you know, we can do that too. What would y'all like to do? Well, we need both a representative and a yes. technical committee exactly. member. Yes. Both. The representative like appoints a technical committee and member, if I even understand this correctly, know. having looked into it. So if we appoint Commissioner Tamayo's representative, then she appoints a technical committee member, which Mike Forbes has been in the past, although he wasn't aware of it. Um, obviously, there's not a lot of communication with the technical committee member or with anyone. Well, I can, I can tell you that no mail was ever received addressed to Commissioner Valdez. It was all uh, addressed to Valencia. Commissioner Valencia. So either 
they weren't keeping up with what was happening or this court never let them know. I, I had no idea. Commissioner, would you, would you like to serve on that committee and then, and then appoint somebody to the technical committee? Would you like to do that? Or do you want to what, think about it for a week? Be, what would be the... I, I want some I think information. Just, I think it was an annual, if I remember correctly, when we voted on this years ago, it was an <laughs> annual meeting in Galveston once a year, you know, that, that the representative would go to. Well, I'll tell you what, why, why don't we do this? Why, why, don't, why don't we table it for a week and try to get a little bit more information as to how many meetings there actually are, what, what you know, what well, is and, it, and, and then also, give her I, I want to know communicate. what benefit the county will get from it, because I don't want to serve on a board just to serve on a board. Yeah, well, he's going to do that. Well, the benefit yeah. we get is we're in a pool to buy energy at a lower cost. We had a presentation brought to Commissioner's Court, and the presentation was a public power pool. It's a pool of governmental entities that get together and buy energy yeah, well, and the energy that we get is at a lower cost than the normal rate. Okay, well I, I understand that process, Commissioner. Well, and but also, but, but you know, are, are we paying dues for this or I mean have we been a no, part of it? No. It, yeah, we have been a part of it since I've been on the commission. Also been. what we're seeing in the in the market out there is sometimes the other providers are able to be more competitive than perhaps they were at one time shortly after deregulation and now they're they're being more competitive in some cases than the public power pool is i believe westlaco has pulled out of it harlingen's pulled out of it several other people have pulled out of it because they're being able to get their power the less expensively yeah. and i know what pete's talking about uh, having some of our accounts being audited and being able to receive power less expensive uh, may end up to a point of where we want to look at who we're dealing with. Other options? With. Yeah. Okay, well, this is what I want to know. First of all, I want to know, is it going to help the county? <coughs> number one. And then number two, if it is, I'll be glad to serve, but I, I'll make more information as to what it is, and then I'll be appointing a technical... Okay, let me hear a motion to table the item so until Pete so comes back and then provide more information to the court. Moved by Commissioner Woods, and by Commissioner Tamayo. Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any aye. opposed, item carries. Item four. <coughs> and right after this item, we'll go to the supplemental item, which includes the mayor of South Padre Island and, and the city manager. Item four, consideration adoption of resolution recognizing by the metal Mr. B. Trevino being selected as a 2007 Texas Independent Automobile Dealers Quality Dealer of the Year. Uh, this item was submitted by Mr. Asaguira. There's a resolution, I think, in your packet. If not, Alice is working on, uh, on the one that we can sign if, if the court uh, deems it proper to give him this resolution. I don't have one. No, oh, this one I just got right now that they're working on. We're saving on paper. We're trying to go paperless. <laughs> <laughs> Move to approve. Okay, moved by Commissioner Benavides. Do I have a second by Commissioner Goss? Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, item carries. If it's okay with the court, let me take the supplemental item out. Uh, discussion and possible action regarding the early voting polling locations for the Democratic primary and Republican primary elections of March 4, 2008, and setting compensation rates. As you all know, the court approved the locations last week, uh, last Tuesday. Pete, this was placed on the agenda, and somebody asked you to place it back on the agenda for further discussion? Right. Um, Commissioner Benavides called me on Friday. Um, with, apparently she had gotten some calls from uh, the town of South Padre Island, and the mayor and city manager are here. So I did a supplemental agenda item uh, so the court would have the opportunity to discuss the item uh, and I guess uh, hear from, from the mayor from South Padre Island. Can we hear from Roger? Yeah. Uh, do we want to hear from Roger first or, or Mayor, do you want to do your plea? Roger? Because I think what happened last week, if I recall, and correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong, but the island was, 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 was an original early voting location last week, and then it was removed, and then it was replaced with the Brownie Park location. Is that, in essence, what happened, or, or tell me different? Yes, when I, when I brought the... You sound better. Commissioners, thank you. When, uh, thank you very much. 
Uh, yeah, when I brought the, uh, the list of early voting locations for approval by Commissioner's Court, the uh, South Padre Island uh, location uh, was one of the sites that was on that list. At that time, when Commissioner's Court entertained the, uh, the, um, the setting of the location for early voting, uh, South Padre Island was, uh, was omitted then from the list, and the uh, Brownie Park, um, or the community center at Brownie right. Park Road, or Brownie Road, was, uh, was placed in there. All right, so now we're back. May, may I ask a question, Roger? Yes. That the term of that location was for the full term of early voting, right? It was for a one week. It was a one week location. One week location? Yes, sir. Only, yes, not sir. the full term. Correct. Okay. Mayor? Uh, Judge, I'm really going to let Dewey address this, but I did want to comment that I thought this had uh, come up a year or two ago, uh, kind of the, basically the same thing had happened, and we had requested uh, that we have uh, early voting on the island uh, for these kinds of uh, elections. And we were told um, in, in words, and I don't want to put words in his mouth, so I, if I'm wrong, he can correct me that you know there was a cost factor I believe and also uh, being able to find the judges in order to work it and uh, uh, if I recall correctly the town was prepared to do both and supply both if we needed to so that's kind of what I recall and so I was kind of surprised when this happened this last time around but Dewey is the one that directly addressed it so I thought I would let him address the issue with you. Right. Ms. Caldwell, how are you? Hi, Judge, Commissioners. Thanks for having us here and putting this on the agenda. Um, like the Mayor, I too understood uh, from conversations with uh, Mr. Ortiz and others some time back that we were going to uh, see early voting on the island, and we perceived this as a follow-through of, of that perceived promise. Um, we were quite disappointed in the uh, cancellation of that. We had uh, a lot of folks on the island who had spoken with me over the last uh, year or so in anticipation of this being the case. Um, I. Uh, gave a call to Mr. Ortiz, who was kind enough to speak with me about it and uh, explain that indeed uh, it, the situation had changed uh, at the behest of the court. And uh, consequently, I uh, asked him to please uh, uh, see if he could get that reconsidered and assured him that the, uh, commission, the uh, folks on the island uh, were very much desirous of having the early voting in our location, particularly with our, our new facility that we have, and that the uh, town would certainly be willing to uh, share uh, in the cost of that issue if that was a problem. And I uh, then followed up with a call to uh, uh, the good commissioner there, Ms. Benavides, and uh, she spoke with me about the matter and I explained much the same thing to her. Uh, it means a lot to the folks on the island. There are uh, reasons why uh, this is important to them. Uh, the uh, folks there, many of the folks that we have on the island are senior citizens. Uh, many of them don't know their way around, particularly off the island. They are part-time residents. Uh, I should say part-time residents. They're certainly residents who are qualified to vote, uh, and they're spending anywhere from six to eight months on the island and perhaps go, go back to their former residence uh, elsewhere. But they really appreciate having the opportunity to have it there. Uh, it's much more convenient for them, and uh, they have really adamantly hoped that this would be the case for a long, long time. Uh, that's not to say that our long-term residents, uh, long-term permanent residents, don't feel much the same way. And so would we, we would uh, certainly uh, ask that you all reconsider this, particularly in light of what we're able to do to assist if, that's, uh, if money is the issue. I support having a location on the island. Uh, but let me ask Roger, what, what are the, the logistically, uh, what is it, are we still within the time frame to be able to add the island or let's say eliminate another spot and add the island or just add the island altogether? Can we do that in terms of getting uh, well, permission? There's, from there's, there's things that need to be done, yes, and permission would be from the Department of Justice. But do we have time right now? Uh, we could ask the uh, Department of Justice to, uh, uh, to expedite it and what I can do is call in, call it in and, or fax it in and, and try to see if I can get, uh, get that done. Uh, there's, there's paperwork that needs to be done in our office, and uh, we would certainly abide by the Commissioner's wishes, as I have placed in the memo to Commissioner Benavides. We'll do it. Uh, it's going to be pretty hard on us, but, uh, I mean, if it has to be done, we'll do it. I've got no problem well, uh, with that. I, we need some discussion here. I, I have some questions. First of all, is it legal to do this? Is there anything illegal about it, to have, to have a city 
pay for for the site i don't know i'm not a lawyer so i'm asking okay, that question. I, can't, I can't address that uh, so I, i'll direct it to our legal counsel that's something that i would have to look at but um off the cuff i don't I mean, it doesn't seem like it would be legal because under the interlocal act as long as it's something that the county has the power to do and the city has the power to do then we can work together to to make an arrangement okay my, my other my other comment is is this uh do we now need in order to be fair countywide uh let other municipalities find out because i know i've gotten a lot of calls from santa rosa for instance that we don't have uh, uh a voting early voting place in santa rosa they're concerned and uh and and of course there's other other communities that are not cities for instance or your city those people are going to have to drive about 40 miles in order to come to an early voting place so i think this is 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 this going to set a precedent that that communities can do this i think this is something we need okay. to think about okay um i mean uh, commissioner and and i agree with you that having an early voting place for people to drive so far you know it's not it's not feasible not for the voters to but uh we certainly have a voting location for anybody in the county within 25 miles the uh the the uh, the code specifies that we must have something within a 25 mile uh, limit uh, for somebody to go and vote but that's uh, early vote uh, that's for early vote yeah for yeah for election day it's a different story right. we've got okay. we've got you know this that's different entirely different but uh, uh, we do have a location for anybody to go within a 25 mile, I mean, much less than that, but, it, you know, 25 miles is what the code re uh, requires. Well, I think that the issue here is that we had it there, and it had been that location on the island. Well, we've, we've, had, moved it. we've, had, we've had election day voting at the island at City Hall, but uh, we haven't had early, uh, voting. early voting at the island. Not early voting. We haven't had ever. No. I don't think so. So how did it get there? It goes back uh, a year or more than a year ago, when uh, representatives from the island have been had been asking for an early voting site at the island, along with an election day site. Okay. Um, probably back over a year ago, uh, I had I received several calls from. Uh, the island uh, and it I'm not uh, I, right now I can't remember who it was but I know that I received some calls from City Hall and it could have been from uh, some of the aldermen there uh, that requested that I try and place a locate an early voting location at the island and I said I would try and so this time around when the primaries where we were scheduling for the primaries I did place it on there uh, for one week I thought one week would be sufficient enough for the island area uh, we do have one in Port Isabel, like it's been noted before, uh, and so it was brought to Commissioner's Court at that time. And so we prepared, we have prepared to do our elections with the uh, with the approved locations. I mean, we've done all of our paperwork, we've done all the preparations for it, we've ordered all, all of our supplies, we've gotten the ballots for uh, to supply those locations, and so. Um, to do an additional one or two locations, I mean, we have we we kind of have to go back and try to to get everything expedited and 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 done in a in a hurtly sort of way uh, to get everything supplied and make sure that we start we're ready to start early voting on the 19th. Well, Roger, uh, when I was called by the town of South Padre and by uh, members of the commission, uh, I had no idea. Okay, that mm -hmm. your office had been um, contacted to put them on. I saw it on the agenda. We talked about it here, and it was voted down. Yeah. And um, but I think that the whole idea is to allow every citizen to uh, be able to vote. And I realize that the precedent that would be set here. Um, would be to a disadvantage for some of the other communities that probably would not be able to uh, fund their own voting precincts. But uh, maybe in, in the future, I mean, I, I really, I'm in favor of it. 
and I would hope that the count that the rest of the commissioner's court would see fit to put it there. Um, I I think it's time we start making these voting sites available at every possible place that uh, the county can do so to encourage voter turnout. And so with that, I'll leave it to the commission. Why can't we just reverse the action that we took last week and just put it back the way it was originally? Because didn't we, last week we eliminated the island. And that, was, added, that was a couple of weeks ago. I was think it was earlier in January. Ago, where we eliminated the island and then put another one. Why, just, why can't we just reverse that action? If the court wishes, eliminate the Brownie Park location and put it back at South Padre Island the way, the way it was originally uh, presented by you. Well, I can no. see us doing the island, but I certainly don't feel like we yeah. ought to be eliminating the one in, at uh, exactly. Park no, I, and Brownie. Because that's an area that is really isolated. People don't really? have, they don't have the ability to get out and, and travel to vote. And it's a large population in that area. Uh, it serves, you know, several precincts. Uh, if the city of South Padre Island wants to volunteer to donate money to help defray the cost of this facility there for early voting. That's something maybe we ought to look at, but yeah. Yeah. we need to look at it today. Um, I, I'm We're not in favor of that. I certainly would, would not want to replace anyone, and I want to make that perfectly clear. I, I, I certainly don't want to knock anyone out. Uh, uh, they knocked you out. <laughs> but, well, I understand that, but I also think that it's very important, like the commissioner said, that people have the opportunity to vote. If people in Santa Rosa are having to drive 10, 15 miles or whatever it is to, to early vote, I, personally, I don't think that should be the case. So, I, you know, in, for this particular election, I would, I would suggest the court consider leaving uh, the... Uh, Park. Brownie Court, yeah. Brownie Park. Le le leaving that one and, and seeing if we can't get early voting on South Padre Island, we will go ahead and fund it this time around so that we make sure that we have it and that and that, that um, community has it as well. And then I would suggest that Commissioner's Court look in the future of, of possibly increasing the location so that, so that others have that opportunity. But I don't want to stand up here and say, you know, let's knock somebody out to allow us back in, even though it was the reverse two weeks ago. Well, fundamentally, I? I don't think it's appropriate to have each city pay because you may have a community like Santa Rosa that can't afford to pay to have an early voting location. The island can, but you get to these smaller little indies that cannot afford it. So all of a sudden, well, but those that can pay can set up an early voting location, which I don't think that's that's not right. But in this case, because we are kind of under the gun, maybe it, I don't have any problem doing that. If Roger can logistically do it, add the island, it's not that expensive, quite frankly, I don't think. Uh, well, you know, if, if you want to do that, not, then, that's, then that's fine. I mean, that's, if it's not that expensive, maybe we can add some other sites. Well, if it's not expensive for them to do it, but again, we have to be, we have a budget set up already. Is that correct, Roger? And we have nowhere, I don't think, you're going to find money someplace else you know, to get this from. I don't know how much it would run, maybe three or four thousand dollars per location if I had to guess. I don't know. Uh, but, but I think at this point we have the city that's, that wants to fund it, they want to work with it. If, if City of Santa Rosa wants something and they want to fund it, you know, you, we've got a limited amount of time to, you know, we can't go back and wait, bring it back next week because we're, then you're only two weeks out. Well, that's, that's why I brought it up. And first of all, I want to thank you, Mayor. Uh, you're a kind person, I've known that all along, and your remarks just now proved it again, uh, that you care about all the people of Cameron County and not just Padre Island. And, and I thoroughly agree with your remarks. Uh, what I would like is, uh, as soon as possible, Roger, that especially Santa Rosa, that you contact them and let them know that if we take this course where they're going to be paying for it, that they be, that they be aware that that's a possibility, but they're going to have to move fast if they want it. Uh, Commissioner, if I, if, I may, if I may ask that the contact not be made by me, I don't believe that I, I could have the authority. Well, maybe Commissioner's giving me authority to do something like that, but it, it'd be setting a precedent where uh, I'd be getting calls. I'm going to start getting calls from different cities well, or then I'll different take care areas. Of it. I'll let them know I, what action we've taken. Well, and, okay, then, well, then at some point we're going to run out of we have to have one machine at each location. 
Is that's, that right? And we don't have a lot of extra machines, and those machines are pretty good capital investment. So we may not be able to add too many more. Uh, I don't know how many extra machines you have, Roger. I, I, I assume you keep one as a backup for well, we, the problem. Well, we, we've got equipment because uh, I always keep at least five of each one, the Automark and the M100, in hand because uh, in an election such as this, I mean, we've got 72 locations for one party and 34 locations for Machine's another party. Machine's not the issue and, at this point. And so well, then maybe the people from Rancho Viejo will be calling you about voting site. They can probably afford it. But maybe this agenda item should be uh, taking action because we're not going to have time between now and the next meeting to do this. We and really you cannot be calling commissioners to get this because then you have an open meetings issue. So I'm wondering if maybe we ought to do is maybe approve this subject to any municipality that wants to call to do it. I, I wasn't saying for us to table this. No, 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 no. I was just saying that, especially Santa Rosa, because I've gotten a lot of calls from Yeah, but there. Commissioner, the, the, the issue, though, is that if, if Santa Rosa decides, if we don't do the, the if, we, if we're not real specific with oh, the it's wording too late on this. for the next meeting? No, you can't. I don't think you have enough time. Well, we As can have a special meeting. It now. But what we can it, it do is, right is have an agenda item uh, or read the agenda, because this is very generic. Approve uh, the island. We can approve Santa Rosa subject to, to them, uh, them coming up with the willing to, to fund it. Exactly. Uh, that way, you know, let's say if, if you call them tomorrow and say, hey, we'll do it, Roger knows by tomorrow mm -hmm. to go ahead and include the Santa Rosa location. We don't have to wait for the following Tuesday to have an agenda item on. That's so if we want, we can, we can do that. And if you want to do it with Rancho Viejo, what well, item are we in? The supplemental. The supplemental. Uh, you know, we can do it subject, you know, approve. I don't know if we can do any municipality, but we can, let's say, name Santa Rosa, City of Rancho Viejo, and it's subject to them, to them funding it. If you want to contact Rancho Viejo to do that, to you can. Emergency. You can call Santa Rosa, you can. Then you get back with Roger, you know, they're going to do it, they're going to pay for it. But then you're going to have between now and tomorrow morning at 10 a.m., you have to come up with a cost estimate as to how much it's going to cost so to fund these know. locations. Um, is this going to be a one-week location or a two weeks? I would think a one-week location. The early voting for early voting. And that way you do it. That way, if Santa Rosa can't pony up the three or four thousand, then it's a moot point. It's going to be about $3,600. But at least, at, least you have, at least you have an agenda item that gives you the latitude to do that if you want. That's my suggestion if you all okay. want to do that. Well, okay, and we're going to wait for, the, for an answer by tomorrow? You know, well, you're going to have to begin. Well, how, we don't know yeah, if Santa well, Rosa well, can do it. First you, first, you have to let me know what the cost is. Mm -hmm. And then you you know you'll get a, an answer right away. I'm just I'm just trying to be fair with them because uh, they had been calling and, and I, I got quite a few phone calls and uh, and they were concerned because of the fact there was no site in in their area and uh, and I think in all fairness to them we need to give them the same opportunity. Now Royal City is going to be a little bit different because they're not incorporated. So to try to get them all together to come up, everybody pony up a few yeah. bucks, it's going to be difficult. Where? A Royal City? No, a Royal City, See, so it, it won't well, be You possible. want to do that? I think Commissioner Gatz has a question of legal. Yeah, are we going to get ourselves into any legal ramifications with the Department of Justice in regards to fair and equal accessibility to a voting location? See, that's why I, mean, I have to pick we're, we're, we're conditioning if we're going to do anything other than, you know, the, the request we have before us is the town of South Padre, okay? That's the request and that's why it came forth. But if we do more or if we start offering it to others and they say, well, we would like one, but we cannot fund it, mm -hmm. will the Department of Justice look at that as an unfavorable creation conditions of voting? You know, you know how they are all the time with this, equal opportunity stuff. You know? Well, that's why, that's why I prefaced I didn't think it was fair to have, just because the South Padre can afford to fund it, to do that precisely for that reason, but you might have the poor communities that cannot afford to do it, and they're being left out, even though they want one, but they can't afford to do it. That was the initial... Well, and my issue is if they can't and we don't do it, will we be in any kind of a situation where... I don't know that's why... Um, I'd, I'd need to talk with them tomorrow morning, first thing tomorrow morning, and, and just find out the ramifications because I, I want to make sure that, you know, allowing the city to pay for it, you know, will, will be a, an allowable type of, of agreement under an interlocal. 
Okay, we will, at we this will. time, I couldn't answer that. Can, can we move to approve it pending legal review with the Department of Justice? And I'll get with Roger because I know. And with Roger and making sure that it's all going to be okay before we proceed. We can do that. Then that's it, my motion. Okay. Now, see, at the very Second. beginning, that was my question. Is it legal for a lot of different reasons? Well, Number I'm, one, a city getting involved in paying for it and then the legality of it as far as being fair. Uh, to all the population. Okay, well, I have a I have a motion for Commissioner, Commissioner Gatsa to approve, subject to legal, whether we can do this, where the island pays. You want to include that as part of your motion? Any other entity that wants to participate? Right. Second. Can you do that, Zilbia? Okay. That was moved by Commissioner Gatsa, second by Commissioner Benavides. Any further discussion? And then as soon as you know, contact Roger so we can move on that. Well, I'd like to get with Roger and call together because he knows the people of the Secretary of State and okay. their legal. you got it. All right. And then shortly after you get an answer, please let us know. Yes. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, item carries. Mayor, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. He might be here for Judge, uh, the mayor is also here for item 27. Let's go to item 27 if there's no objection. Discussion and possible action regarding the withdrawal of prior annexation approval of designated area of county property south of the town of South Padron and approval of the new proposed boundary area. Mayor, as you know, this is the, I don't know how many times it's come up, but we got some correspondence, some folks that initially said yes, now they say no. So right. we're back to discuss this again and uh, let you know that the ones that are saying nay, I guess we have to carve them out, I guess. That's, that's fine. Is there anything else we have to do with that, Pete? No? Okay. Do you have to draw up some new boundaries or something? Yeah, a new survey okay. would be required. All right. And who pays for that? Uh, the city of South Padre right. Island. Yes. They hired a surveyor to do the, the initial survey, then the amended survey, and I guess now they would amend it again. Yeah. The, the, uh, uh, the only thing I'm concerned about, and I, but, but I mean, I don't, uh, we'll obviously do it subject to that, is I'm a little concerned on. Uh, on making sure that the properties match up, you know, connect. But I mean, that's just something that you can work that out. I mean, we'll okay. just deal with it at the time that that it happens. I think it will, but but that's my only concern. Other than that, we're ready to go, and we can we can get them to to redo it and um, move on. Okay. Do I hear a motion to approve the um, the, the the withdrawal of the the entities that I guess from the annexation and then. Instruct Pete to get together with the mayor and his survey crew to redo the lines. Right, and then their entities. attorney would also draw up the petition. Okay. Now, do I hear a motion by Commissioner Benavides? Do I have second. a second by Commissioner Tamayo? Any further discussion? Question. Is every entity or business that is in the described area of the annexation included in our backup here? Or everybody that everybody was contacted. Now they might have not responded, but was everybody contacted? Well, because everybody was contacted initially, and some of the people that I see here saying they do not support it were all at a meeting. I think Commissioner Benavides was at the meeting too, and they all supported this. And now we have requests to non support. Right. We well, have gone. Any sense to me. We've, we've gone back and forth, um, and you're right. Initially, we got letters of support from, I think, you know, most, most of, of the ones that are in here. Then we had a meeting. Um, uh, the mayor was there, uh, Commissioner Benavides, park staff, myself, David. Uh, we went over all the issues, answered all the questions they had, um, and we thought, you know, we, we had an agreement, I guess, a week after that, and we got the first letter saying that, you know, they did not want to be part of the annexation. Um, and then uh, subsequent to that, I believe we've gotten two other letters. And I think at this point where we're at is Dirty House. Um, it's not interested in being part of the annexation uh, as well as a, a couple of subleases at the marina. But Javier is here, and, and I think he's met with some of the, uh, the, the folks out there. Well, the issue here is did they know that they could just send us a letter and we would exclude them? Did we officially acknowledge the fact that every one of them was contacted or not? Or is it just those that decided to be excluded sent the letter and that's what we're doing? 
because again, it becomes a fairness issue. You know, I mean, so well, we folks, have all the people uh -huh. that that uh, attended the meeting at Schlitterbahn. All of them agreed to do it. And now they're saying they don't want to. And now they're saying they don't. Want, well, part of them are anyway. Right. But uh, I think the mayor was very explicit in saying what the pro proposed annexation would be. I know Pete explained it. I explained it. No one there, after asking their questions, said they were against it. I mean, I don't think we ought to be having the town of South Padre go pay for a resurvey just to exclude certain legal pieces of property. You know, I mean, we already agreed to edit right. these folks, did we not? Yes. As a commissioner's court? And I think we should go forward. I really believe that we should go forward. I think we need to table this item. Well, okay. on, our, well, on yeah. our background yeah. information, there's only there's three, three that say they do not. Right. Commissioner, if you want to make a motion to go ahead and go forward and ignore the uh, those people that want to be taken out, I guess you can do that. I'd like to make that motion. Okay. Um, we already had a motion to to take them out. So you're going to withdraw your motion to take them out and in, and leave it the way it is. Yes. Okay. Do I have uh, Commissioner Tamayo? Do you want to withdraw your second? What was her motion? Well, her motion was to go yes, ahead to go and, and, and redraw. No, no. Your initial motion was to, to go ahead and, and eliminate oh, the three right. entities that wanted to be pulled out. Okay. You seconded the motion. Commissioner Van this is now saying no. Uh, go ahead and leave them in. I'm hearing you right. So she's, she was going to withdraw her motion. I'm asking if you'd like to withdraw your second of her motion to go back and redraw the lines. And. And go back to what we had already And go back to the way it was yeah. originally. Okay, so you withdraw your yeah. motion. Okay. So now, Commissioner Bailey, you're, you're going to go ahead and make a motion to basically leave it the way it is and and not, uh, just so we understand. Judge, and, yes. if I recall correctly, when we came back to discuss the, the um, dirty house um, situation, if I recall correctly, the action from the court was that they was contingent upon getting a letter that's correct. Uh, that is correct. of support from Dirty Owls. So since we did not, then I would say you know, that's something that legal needs to interpret. But I would say that then that action is, is void because we didn't get a letter of support. We got a letter saying that they do not wish to be. Well, that's support. right. We, the, the initial action was we needed to get it in writing those people that did not want to be included. Okay. Dirty Owls specifically. Yeah, Dirty Owls was the only one, but then right. subsequent to that, others have come on board right. later too. Okay. Yeah, I understand that. But I don't have anything from Dirty Owls in this packet. No, I think that no, was that was, that was previously. That, that was, was way back. Yeah, but it still wasn't included in here as a request to be. I think that is the only one. Not that in this one, but it wasn't the past. Initially, that initially said no. Right. So is Dirty Owls in or out? Well, we're good to he would have to be out. They're out because they sent a letter saying out. that they yeah. do not want to be out. And that's how we voted. So then they'll get Well, there's already a motion on the floor. Uh, it's okay. So then, Pete, let, let me understand if you're if I understand you correctly. We really haven't made a final decision on any annexation because we were waiting on Dirty Al. No. No, because if we the make court, a final decision on annexation, I don't think we have the authority to de-annex. That's a whole different can of worms. Well, the court approved a survey that included the the Sea Ranch, the restaurant, the marina, Schlitterbaum, and it did not include Dirty Owls. Correct. That's what we. The court took action on that, and we're fine on that. Okay. Subsequent to that, the court took action on Dirty Owls contingent upon us getting a letter of support from Dirty House. We did not get that letter. We got a letter saying they do not want to be part. So what I'm saying is that that part, yes, my opinion, is void. So the other action the court took, yeah. that's, that's done. What, what so we've approved point already point. annexes everything except Dirty Owls. Is that right? If what we've already approved in the past annexes everything except Dirty Owls. That is correct. So okay. if the court if the court does not take action, then that action's already been taken by the court. So what I'm saying is that I don't think we have the authority to de-annex 
I don't know if some of these that wrote letters not wanting to be in there, which already are in there, I don't think we have the authority to de-annex them. But, well, Commissioner, you're not de-annexing. You what you're doing is um, no you haven't signed the county judge has not signed the petition yet. So what action you Whether took was just approving. We, took, voted for we, it. we voted it's for done. it and approved it. But it has to be a petition well, we submitted by the county asking to be annexed. And we have not done that. The county judge has not signed that petition yet. We should have signed it after we voted on it. Well, it wasn't, it wasn't prepared yet by the attorneys for South Carolina. How long ago has that been? No, we just received that. Maybe about three or four, no, three no. weeks ago. How long ago did we vote on it? Oh, I, I don't know. I don't remember. Last that. year. Long time ago. Yeah, but we can't control what they send us or what they don't send us. I understand send. that, but we've already made the action when we did it. And everyone was annexed at that time. Well, anyway, we're, well, we're, 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 we're going that direction now anyway. Yeah. Is that right? And the only one left out is Dirty Owl. That's correct. Okay. So should we table this item legal? You want to table it? You can table it if you want, but if, I mean, the action that you took, the last action that you took was you agreed to give permission to annex the area except for Dirty Owl. Um, the petition had, was just submitted to us maybe three weeks ago, and, and I took it to the county judge and we talked about it, and we knew that there were some of these business owners that were maybe not in support of it again, so that's when we decided to make sure who was and who was not in support of of being annexed, and this is the result. But no annexation has been done by the city because they can't do that until we submit a petition asking to do that. We have not done that yet. Yeah, but John says We've correctly acted that, that we, we acted as a commissioner's court in uh, approving everything except dirty else. Right. That's, that's correct. So that's all that's we have done forward from there on. You sign that thing or bring it to me and I'll sign it. Someone needs to sign it. Should Simple. have been here a long time ago. Simple. Move to approve. So we need to. But my concern well, we is. We don't need an action on this. My concern is how could we cloudy things up so much by including all these people that now want to be in next on an agenda item? That's my that, concern. That do not want to be in. I know. That so already. Some were. are saying yes. Yeah, but some were saying no. That we're already part of the annexation process. Before. Before and mm -hmm. already been approved by this court. And I don't think we have the authority to de-annex anyone. And I think their concern was at this meeting that they would be ensured that all uh, regulations as far as ordinances, uh, that they would still stay within the county. Uh, yeah, there were, there were you know, two basic issues that came up. One was the, the signage, mm -hmm. and number two was health inspections. And that was it. But, you know, the mayor was there. Every single question that they posed, you know, we answered, and, and they kept going back to those two issues over and over and over. But um, so, if this item is tabled, then the previous action taken by the commission stands. That's it. Okay. So, so we have to withdraw. We have to withdraw the motion on the. What more withdraw? Yeah. Okay. Do I hear, Commissioner? Do you, Ms. Do you want to withdraw your motion again to table it? I mean, to. Uh, Approve it the way it was presented? Yes. I move. Do it your second. Presented today. Correct. And today. I second that. Okay. Now, do I hear a motion to table, table so the item? My Commissioner Tamayo, do I have a second? Second. By Commissioner Benavides. All those in favor, somebody by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The item carries. All right. We are where so we now, were. So, and, but we, we are where we were. But we have to take the next step. No, that's it. The next step is that the judge needs to sign that's, the petition. That's the right. step I'm talking yeah, about. I never gave it. Should have been signed months ago. All right. Yeah. I, I want to thank plan. you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, I, I do want to make one more comment. Now, let me tell you that the reason that it wasn't signed was because these things were still pending. Right. Okay. No, I, and I understand. Not that. because I could. Fine as a matter, but it, right. they were still pending. Were, and I still, I still think there's some things pending. I still think, as I think, when we talked about it, we gave the property owners the opportunity to bail out or in. Well, how they got the message or didn't, but kind of, we got three letters here that they did not want to do it, and now they're in it. Well, part of part of the confusion was was that Dirty Al's has flip flopped several times. They they wrote a letter saying they agreed. We came back to you and said, here's a letter saying they agreed. Right. Then the meeting came up that we all had to attend because suddenly some people got cold feet. Then we left that meeting, everybody was fine. But let me ask you, but who contacted the, the three that we got letters from saying they didn't want to be annexed? How did they know 
to write us something that they didn't want to be annexed other than Dirty Owls. I mean, I didn't have any contact with anybody yeah. out there. So, some of the, some, so they just took it upon themselves to write us and say, hey, we don't want to be annexed. So I don't know. Okay, Commissioner, I'm sorry. Uh, just one quick comment. I'd like to publicly congratulate the mayor and his council and his city administration. I was at the ribbon cutting this morning of a beautiful building on the town of South Padre. Uh, I thought we were high tech here. <laughs> They're high tech over there. Well, but you have a lot of history behind you. Yes, yes. But uh, you're making history there. Well, and uh, you know they have a beautiful building, very, very user-friendly building, and I would encourage everyone here to drop by. Not into the left side of the entrance of the building. That's where they book you. But the rest of the building. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for being there. Thank you, Mayor, and congratulations on your facility. Consent items, consent items and travel items. Are there any items any member of the court wish to take out and discuss separately? 13. Yes. Uh, 13. Item 13. Uh, 15 and 16. Item 15 and 16. Item 19. Judge, could you include um, number 30 under consent, please? And include item 30 as part of the consent. 19. Did you pull out 19? I pulled out 19. Anything on travel? Include 30 in consent. Include 30 in consent. Do I hear a motion to approve all those items with the exception of those that I mentioned? So moved. Moved by Second. Commissioner Tamayo, second by Commissioner Benavides. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Item 13, consideration and authorization to exempt from the County Purchasing Act the contract for the transportation of deceased bodies to the morgue for autopsies, specifically the requirements of VTCA code section 262.023 pursuant to the authority granted in section 562.024 A and 2. Commissioner Tamayo, that was yours. Uh, yes, uh, Judge. I, when I was reviewing the agenda, I, I couldn't clarify exactly what we were trying to do here. So I called on, on David Garcia to explain that to me, and I would appreciate it if he would do that at this time, <clears throat> in the manner in which he explained it to me. Judge, Commissioners, Commissioner Tamayo, this is a, an agenda item that was placed on, on by legal. We're having a discussion regarding the transport of our bodies that are going to our um, more to our uh, forensic pathologist facility. And um, in order for us to be able to, to move forward with um, contracting with somebody, we need to do an exemption um, from the County Purchasing Act. If I'm not mistaken, legal can correct me. Um, and so this agenda item will allow us to do that. <clears throat> this was as a result of the concern brought to us by Dr. DeWitt. Okay. Okay. Well, Farley. Dr. Far DeWitt. Dr. Farley. Wishful thinking. So, so, uh, so what will happen is that they'll be able to go out for bids. We'll be able to put a, right, the court will. Pardon? Right? The court will be able to go out for bids or do an RFP to select one or a group of transport services for okay. transporting bodies to our uh, autopsy service uh, okay. area. And that's, and that's the key information right there that, that I felt needed to be clarified. Staff will, can negotiate directly with provider or issue an RFP, mm -hmm. right? That's right, sir. Okay. Either or. What staff would that be? That would be you all in legal. And or, or whoever you designate. Correct. Or whoever you designate. Okay. Any further discussion? No. Judge, Commissioner, I think you have some funeral home owners that would like to make some statements. I'm sorry? There's some there's funeral some directors owners here. Owners of funeral homes? Oh, I thought they okay. okay. want to say something. Well, let me, let me hear a motion in a second. Move by okay. Commissioner Gatz, a second by Commissioner Tamayo. Discussion. Is this something that you all are okay with? Yes? Now, if y'all are all going to say the same thing, then that's great. We can just limit it to a couple of folks, unless y'all are going to have a disagreeing conversation. Judge, commissioners, I understand what you're trying to do. First question we have for you, are we going back to Harlingen for autopsies? Instead of, we're, right now we're going to Hidalgo County. The question I have, when are we going to Harlingen to Valley Baptist? Do you know? Does, does, does the commission know? We don't have a date. Yeah, there's yet. no date yet. Yes. So as we stand right now, we're going to Hidalgo County. Right. Correct. 
That's my understanding. So, uh, uh, until the uh, facility at Valley Baptist is up upgraded, which should be within the next hopefully couple of weeks. They were waiting for equipment to be coming in. Going. So as soon as that equipment comes in, then we'll, we'll start transporting to Harlingen. Is that what you're saying? Yes, Judge. Last time they were here, um, the update they gave us was the end of January. We're already at the end of January. And so, so give it give it another couple of weeks for contingencies. Okay. Are you all familiar right now how it's operated right now in Cameron County when we have a homicide in Brownsville or in Cameron County? Do you all know what we're up against? I do not. Yeah. But maybe you should. Do, let would us you know. like to be educated quickly? Yes. If it's quickly. Okay. We get notified from a justice of the peace to go to the scene or to the hospital, make a removal. If it's trauma accident, we have to use body bags. From here we go. Then the judge, at his request, picks out a funeral home at random, whether it's Salazar, Tony Torres, or any of the, the JPs up in Harlingen. And from there we go up. Right now we're going to Hidalgo County. I think they're paying us $300 right now from Brownsville to Hidalgo. Then we have to go back to Hidalgo and get that body back and retrieve it for the next of kin. So actually, the cost of gasoline has gone up here recently, but that's what we're up against. I don't know if you all are familiar with that. I mean, I've got representatives from all the local independent funeral homes behind me. We're just inquisitive to know if we're going to still continue or, or is it going to be sold as a bidder or, you know, what's going on? We don't know. We would like to be educated on it ourselves. And we're given, I well, think, by doing the action we're doing tonight is we're giving ourselves the opportunity to RFP, which would be to send, ask for proposals as to, I don't think any of us want to shortchange your, your operations or your costs, you know. On the contrary, I think that this court increased those costs not too long ago compared to what they were. Do you know what indigent burial is paying right now to the funeral homes? Well, but that's not on the agenda, though. It's not on the agenda, but just for your information, it's $1,000. Yeah. Okay. We're aware of that. For indigents. It's been that way since I was before the commissioners in the court back in the other session. But, I mean, that's regardless. Right now we're just trying to figure out what do we do and how far are we going to go with it and where do we stand on it. I feel as though, personally, as an independent, I feel the JPs doing what they're doing right now are doing a fair job. That's my suggestion right now. I don't know how the other guys feel about it, but if you hire it to somebody, well, are they going to be on the scene as quick as we are? Are they coming from Hidalgo County all the way to Cameron County to make a removal and then take it back there? I don't know. This is something you all need to be aware of. There's a lot of factors involved. There's more than meets the eye. Well, this action would be our first step in trying to get something resolved. That's the way I'm interpreting right. this. This is just moving in the, in the direction at that pace of adequately compensating folks that are doing work for the county. <clears throat> because the rates and allowing all of you to turn in, if it's an RFP, each one of you could turn in your own, or you could get together as as a group and turn in, you know, what you wish as a group, and you know, go on a rotating call basis. I mean, that's up to you, to you all. Maybe, are, are you all telling us that the system that we have right now isn't broke, it doesn't need fixing, or is there something that needs fixing about it that we can accomplish by going through an RFP process? Uh, and, and you're exactly right, Commissioner. I mean, it's not broke. Okay. So, I mean, why try to fix it? The bottom line is, uh, are we going to take away the families? decision as to what funeral home they want to use. A lot of the times there are family members present whenever we pick up a human remain. Sure. And they tell the judge what funeral home they want to use. But if the judge has to say, well, we have a private contractor that's going to come all the way from McAllen or Timbuktu or wherever, is that going to take away from the family's right to decide what funeral home takes custody of their loved one? That's my concern. I can imagine me being in that situation and a family member needed to go somewhere, I would certainly want to be able to say where that family member was going to go to. Yeah. That's only fair. Yeah. And, and commissioners, we never, never, we never had a problem before uh, when we were working with Valley Baptist in the years and years where we uh, 
we, res we respond to the call, we go up uh, to the scene, we transport the loved ones to Valley Baptist, and then at that time they'll call us for us to, uh, when, when the autopsy is being completed, they'll, we'll go ahead and re bring the, their loved ones back to the funeral home. But we never had had problems with, when we're working with Valley Baptist, the problems, we want to know where the problems are right now. Is there is, the problems needs to be addressed to us as independent funeral directors, we need to know, because there's no communication between the Lyle Funeral Home, Dr. Farley, and our funeral homes here in Cameron County. So we need to find out where we stand. David, tell us how this agenda item is going to help them. Because I think, I think it is broken. And the reason it's broken is because of the compensation that we're currently paying you you're just telling me, Ali, that it, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not sufficient. So there's something wrong there. And the answer is not necessarily, well, let, let, let's double it. Let's just bump it up. Yeah. So I want to hear how this agenda item is going to help, I guess, address their concerns that they have, and, and it's going to help them. Yeah, well, and, and I think you need to also include to address the concerns that were brought to us by Dr. Farley when she was here about a month ago in regards to the receipt of bodies and the timing and the tagging and the body bags and issues that she had brought to our attention with the concerns. Well, a couple of things. The first, obviously, is you know we're trying to get back to Valley Baptist um, so that we'll, we'll be in Cameron County and we'll be closer to you know centrally located areas so that <clears throat> we'll have 24/7 access to the facility there and the confusion um, will hopefully decrease. Um, the the other issue is that when we when we um, settled on Dr. Farley and having the Ceballos Funeral Home or morgue be the facility, the funeral directors were here and as well that day, and I believe most of them agreed with the um, the rate that was going to be uh, given to them at that time, and so I don't know why now there's there is an issue with that. Um, and then so, and then also, <clears throat> we've been, and you may have, a, gentlemen may have a point with the co the communication between uh, Dr. Farley and the funeral directors. We get phone calls from Dr. Farley. Um, it's usually on a long weekend or something happens, you know, on a holiday weekend where a body needs to get to Ceballos and it hasn't gone there, and you know, people are trying to figure out where the body's at and she's calling and she's not getting any response according to her from from the funeral um, home that that is being res uh, that's responsible for transporting at that time so she's giving us all that this information and telling us that she's um trying to work with the funeral home and so um i guess it was three weeks ago when dr farley came when we were talking about the medical legal death investigator position and that was one of the recommendations she gave to us so that we would have an investigator on board to help the JPs, um, you know, um, fan out some of the issues that they're working on. As well as <clears throat> the other recommendation she gave us at that time was to try to do a transport service um, similar to what Hidalgo County is doing. And that would help um, with the communication, that would set some parameters, that would set some guidelines and some, I guess, rules to make sure that every, everything's being followed thoroughly and that that everything is being done according to a contract. Because right now, I think the contract is vague and, you know, um, times and and how um, how long, you know, they're supposed to take um, from when they pick up the body to when they deliver it. Correct me if I'm wrong, David. But, um, and so those are some of the issues that we've been dealing with. The, helping facilitate some of the work with the JPs and then also transporting the bodies in a timely fashion. And like I said, hopefully it'll get better with when we move to Valley Baptist and, and so we need to figure out what we're gonna do when we move to Valley Baptist in terms of transporting the bodies. From what I understand, the move to Valley Baptist will clear up a lot of the problems because if I understand it correctly, and I may, I'm subject to being corrected on this, is that sometimes Savallo's funeral home doesn't have a available facility to accept bodies on the weekends when they're full 
you know, and, and you drive a body up there, they turn you around and tell you to go back home. Well, you know, what do you do with it at that point in time? And this seems to be Dr. Farley's problem that, you know, if she doesn't have the body there to work on Monday morning, she doesn't have it there because, not necessarily because of what the funeral directors that were transporting the bodies did, but because the facility that she has asked us to use, Sabayos Funeral Home, doesn't have the facility available at the time they need to be available. So perhaps the issue of getting back to Valley Baptist will solve that problem. It should. And, and that's what I think is happening. But and Mr. Commissioner, I do agree with you on that. There is, uh, uh, the last time I was here at the meeting, we had a, a call, and we, we, we responded to the call, and we called the vials in a timely, timely matter to let them know we're en route to, to uh, transport a loved one. And they turned us back and said, take it to Valley Baptist because our coolers are completely full, and we'll call you Monday morning for let you know what we need to do. Well, so then we get a call from Monday morning, we get a call from Dr. Farty's office asking us where is the body because the, the police officers were there. And I said, well, they told us that to take the body to Valley Baptist. So we have to go back to Valley Baptist, do a second removal, and then take that body back to McAllen. Because there's, what I th we're thinking here, there's no communications between Savile's funeral home and Dr. Farty's office. So we're trying to compromise and work with with the agencies to try to see what we can do to make things easier for all of us, you know. And now there's an issue about the body bags, that all the bodies are not, not being tagged, and, and uh, according to Dr. Dr. Farley, we never got a fax, we never got a memo, we never received any information concerning how she wants the human, re human remains to be uh, transported once we get to survival. We got the memo after she made that discussion with you all, and I have a copy of that fax that we received, and all the other funeral directors here from different parts of the county, from Orange and San Benito, uh, Brownsville, that how she wants the human remains to be delivered once we uh, go to Smile Funeral Home. So. And I think that, see, this is where the RFP would come in yeah. because it would itemize those things that they would want to occur. And at the same time, the RFP would give all of you the opportunity to ask for adequate compensation for the work that you do. If it's more expensive than what we're paying you now, this will be the opportunity for you all to tell us in an RFP manner what the cost should be. <coughs> you're, 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 you're saying an individual or local transportation, or are you talking about an outside agency come into the county? Uh, I'm sorry, you, I couldn't hear you. When you say in the RFP, are you going to allow other uh, counties to come in and, 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 and uh, I think we have to. Yeah. Legally, I think when you do an RFP, right, I mean, it's just whoever. But I think the, but the, the, the RFP the should be structured in such a way where it's going to address not only fees, but timeliness, uh, you know, insure, you know, whatever it is. But I mean, it, I mean, I don't think we're going to have somebody from Bear County do that and, even and exactly. you know, or even, you know, even another exactly. neighboring county if it's, you know, because part, part of the, part of the, uh, uh, you know, I think part of the RFP process, you know, one of the, one of the factors is going to be how, how, how quickly can you get this body to where it needs to go. You know, if you all are come up with a proposal, it's going to take us an hour and a half. Um, somebody else is going to three hours. Well, obviously the hour and a half is going to be something that, that we'll look at. But it's got to be weighed along with the factor of cost and timeliness, your insurance, your facilities, your vehicle, you know, all those things. And you're going to put the RFP together with somebody, I assume, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Does anyone other than funeral homes do this type of transport? I would think that there would be ambulance services that may respond to the RFP that uh, could very possibly uh, give us a, a different view of being ambulance able to cost, take care of the Ambulance service on the EMS board, then ambulance costs are exorbitant compared well, to the aircraft. Some costs, of the ambulance you know. companies are in transport business only, and that's really yeah. what they like. Yeah. And if they're not out doing something else, they want to keep those things on the road. Yeah. Um, I, I think if, if we get, you know, I'd, I'd kind of like to see this postponed for a while until after we get Valley Baptist in place and operating, and then see if we have the problems. But I think the problems are generally going to go away at that time. And I was going to say, Commissioner, before we go out and draft an RFP and do any of that, um, we're going to set up a meeting 
um, with the Bios Funeral Home, Dr. Farley, and the funeral directors, funeral homes, see if we can iron out some of these differences and some of these issues, and then start working, you know, at that time, the appropriate time on an RFP or, or uh, I think package. that would be better. Well, I know we've got a motion and a second, but I'd like to see one to table it. Do you want to, at least till after the okay. Baptist is in? Oh, here we go again. Uh, Commissioner Gatza, you made the motion. Commissioner Tamayo, you seconded the motion to to approve item 13. Commissioner Gatza, you want to withdraw it? And, and uh, Commissioner me, Tamayo, do you want to second it and then table it? Let me hear John's. What, he just what wants to table it. My idea is to table it until after Valley Baptist gets into operation and then see if we have a problem at that time that we need to address because, you know, the. These folks standing in front of us who do the transporting say it's really not broke right now. There are some issues that need to be taken care of, but apparently uh, the consensus is that Valley Baptist, once they start operating, will be able to take care of those issues. So you're saying wait until they have their meeting? I'm saying wait until after Valley Baptist is operating and accepting, and yeah, I don't, you know. They but in the meantime, have them yeah. meet. Well, in the meantime, what's they can meet what's going to happen because it, it's weeks it, away is, from it <clears throat> maybe much who knows it so you're not complaining about what you get paid no we need to discuss that yes well, <laughs> i mean the only way to discuss it is to, is go to have to, is to have to talk about it yes well you know the, the way that that we can negotiate and talk is through in the a bid process of, Either yeah, allowing so staff to negotiate directly with or issuing an RFP, and that's why it's open-ended in how it's done here, because we would like the opportunity to make sure that we adequately compensate folks that are doing work. And, and have some structure and, to it. And, and structure in regards to the issues of tagging, body bags, timeliness. The tagging was done at Valley Baptist with security. There wasn't a problem with that. It was always handled through security. It was simple. It was factual. It was but we're not there right now. Which, which I'm saying, that, that wasn't a problem. Obviously, the problem is in Hidalgo County. The doctor doesn't like the way we handle our business from down here. We need to discuss it with her so we can work with her. I don't have a problem putting a toe tag on the body when I'm in route, you know. That's nothing to it. But we need to keep her happy. She's the main lady. Well, we're going to set up a meeting for next week um, to discuss some of these issues, and we'll be back to you. Well, if, if we allow the item to go, we can at least allow staff to also negotiate. Yeah, let's talk to them, mm -hmm. see where they're at. Well, that's where we are at right yeah, this, now. This okay. item's not going to—it's uh, not an RFP approval or anything. That's right. Know. It's just a either or. Let's move. We have a motion and a second for that to do that. Okay, and what we're talking about is staff getting with them and talking, you all having some meetings among yourselves, also with Dr. Farley, finding out when Valley Baptist is going to come online, seeing how that will operate and what that will do for improvements of your operation, and, and Dr. Farley's also, and then you'll come back to a staff at some point and fill us in on that? Yep. Great. Okay. That's well, we just so we understand, that is not what we're passing here. <clears throat> well, that's, that's what the result of what we pass here will be. An exemption. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? I want to mention one thing, Judge. Yes, Oscar. Oscar. Okay. Uh, th there's two points. About five years ago, could have been approximately five years ago, they, they uh, brought this item up for uh, RMP bids. There wasn't a, an entity that wanted a bid on, on Cameron County. It's already been before the board or the commission on that. They weren't able to do anything in that area. It's only one person that we're aware of that wants to do it, and they're out of Hidalgo County. Uh, the, um, you know, that's the, the commission's choice to deal with people from out of the county. I think it's more efficient to have the funeral homes work the way they've been working. Uh, there's a, another point that I, I've tried to uh, talk to people on the on the commissioner's court is that you know they're looking at models from other counties other cities 
why don't they look at the, the models that, that have smaller counties have their own facilities, their own morgue, they're not paying, you know, a hospital exorbitant fees for, for refrigeration or an embalming service, uh, an exorbitant fee for refrigeration per day, that there's been bodies there that, and their uh, requirements are a family member has to sign a release form in order for them to release them, so they really have, have you all over a bag or over a barrel and they're holding these bodies there, I think you can check into that for day after day, $75 a day. If you own the facility, you know, you could pay off for what you're paying for, for Valley Baptist or these other facilities, you could own a facility like that in the, probably in seven years. And then the, the county would be able to use that money they were paying for those expenses for other things that we really need and we can't budget in there. I know that's not on the agenda. I'd like to see how it can be brought up, you know, for an agenda you know, item to be researched. The Valley Baptist facility is no pay associated with that. I'm sorry? There's no pay associated with the Valley Baptist facility. Okay, they, they just do it as a... Uh, right. Okay. The only thing we pay for is to toxicology reports that are done, which you would have to send out to a lab somewhere, mm -hmm. wherever you do them. But not okay. for the facility. But not so the facility. What, we're, what we're doing right now is, is they're doing it for pay, though, right? Where, where we're at now, not because of we're choice, but because pay. we didn't have a right. choice. But and uh, Dr. Farley is, is paying Valley Baptist for using their facility. So you're really paying uh, Valley Baptist through well, Dr. Farley. You know, it's just not, like a, the, not, the, the people that do the so. autopsy, don't they have to pay for the use of the facility? No, sir. No? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm at a loss. We pay her for her services. I've been, I've been misinformed then. We pay her I, I for apologize. her services per autopsy. Right. Okay. But uh, there's, there's counties with uh, much lower populations that have their own facilities and medical examiners that I'll are sure, if, if you can get less. that information to us, yeah. specifically which counties, I don't know of any Nueces small... County. Nueces County is 321,000. Yeah, they have their own. We, yeah, they have we know their own. They've had it for 20 years. Right. We're, uh, our estimate is 381,712. Right. Over 66,000 uh, heads. But, they have, but they have interlocal agreements with other surrounding counties. With about that. 13 mm -hmm. surrounding counties so that, that is, are part yeah. of their facility. And I will yeah. tell you that the, the Hidalgo County judge and, and us have been talking about doing a regional facility uh, and that's part of our capital improvement plan that we're going to work on at some point uh, to do that. So we, we are going in that direction at some point in developing a medical examiner. Yeah. I want to apologize. I've received uh, false information about what uh, Valley Baptist was getting per that's body right. because I was given erroneous information according to you all. On the contrary, they're even doing the improvements at their own expense. At their own expense. Okay. I apologize about that. That's all right. That's fine. We, okay. we, get, we get erroneous information all the time. <laughs> so don't worry so about that. So really what we're looking at is a short-term solution and a long-term plan. Right. And we're aware of that. Okay. Thank you. And adequately compensating you people is part of the plan? Well, thank you all for being here. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I had a motion by Commissioner Gatza, second by Commissioner Tamayo. Any, any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. Any aye. opposed? Item carries. Item 15, consideration approval to reject RFP number 070105 for locations 5 and 6 and possible action to solicit bid, including approval of bid document for beach rental concessions at DJ Lerma L6 and Sandpiper Pavilion L50 located at Isla Blanca Park. Who pulled uh, that one? Uh, I, asked that be, okay. I asked that it be pulled. First of all, I wanted to make sure that legal, I know that your signature is here, uh, that you approve the document, or? Yes, even after, um, as of yesterday, we were still making a couple of changes, but yes, I approved the document. Okay, well, the reason I'm asking that is that, uh, not due to anyone else's fault, but my own. I, I got sick yesterday afternoon, so I went to the doctor and got the email with a document I understand after after I left, so I haven't seen it, and I I just have it in my possession, but I haven't read it. I just wanted to make sure that everything is in order. One of the things that um, Judge Costco had wanted addressed was um, the current concessionaire, whoever that person was, having enough time to be able to vacate the premises, and and I added um, some language to that effect in in the instructions to the bidders. Anything further? I think we need a little better explanation than what we've gotten up to now. Yeah. You know, because there is confusion out there as to why we're doing this on only two properties. 
versus five that were bid out together initially. And I think that I would like Javier to kind of give us a little, I mean, if we took as long as we did on agenda item, whatever that was, on autopsies, I think this deserves a little bit of time. I think that it deserves time enough to make sure that the folks directly impacted by this action understand and get an explanation of what we're doing. Yes, sir, Commissioner. <clears throat> um, on uh, locations five and six, those were bid out, uh, as you recall, um, in a package uh, of, of um, RFPs. Uh, it was seven locations. And um, five and six are beach rental concessionaires. Um, and when we bid those out, uh, there was a disparity on on uh, the number of years um, that came in. You know, they, they had, uh, some of them were three, five, 10, 12 years. So um, the committee met, they reviewed them, and they wanted some uh, uniformity to, to um, as far as the terms of these concessions and if that would amount uh, of annual base rent was gonna change. So what I did was uh, the, the committee asked that I contact um, the concessionaire or the bidders or the proposers, I guess I should say, um, and see if those amounts would change, if the years would change. So when I made my first phone call um, and speaking to one of the, the uh, proposers, um, I kind of realized that maybe we shouldn't be discussing this with them because it may seem to be, uh, or take may, people may consider it, uh, uh, I guess, negotiating with them at, before the award. So that was, um, uh, we came back to the committee and the committee says, okay, well, let's just go based on the information we get. So the, the um, um, committee made a recommendation. It came before the court. Um, there was one um, of our uh, proposers had filed a um, um, protest. Um, and that uh, allowed for the, um, I guess, the proposer to have a debriefing with the county and with the committee. Um, after that, um, in discussions, um, and Mike can give you more information about that, but as far as, uh, I think after the debriefing, she had submitted in writing uh, her, her issues that she had. Um, so um, after that, we felt, and I say we, uh, myself, um, Mike Forbes, and, and Dilby and, and Richard, the uh, best thing to do, the cleanest thing to do is to bid these out, these two, uh, that haven't been awarded yet, bid them out uh, instead of uh, submitting our uh, request for proposals. Mike, Commissioner, anything else? Anything else legal? No, that's, that's what I was... Any, any comment from legal? This, um, the two locations were under protest. Um, the instructions to the bidders do say that a contract cannot be signed until unless, if there is a protest going on. And so um, as this process went along, uh, there were no contracts entered into as to these locations, these two locations. Um, the protest goes to Mike Forbes and he gets to make the first recommendation. And, and if the protester is not happy with that, then it goes to the auditor. And if the auditor comes back with the decision or recommendation that the protester is not happy with, then the final um, phase is the commissioner's court. Well, we're at the phase where it went to Mike Forbes. And I believe after Mike looked at the protest that was submitted in writing after the debriefing conference, Mike is of the belief that it's better to rebid these two locations. Okay. And because of the fact that they're under protest? Because some of the, the issues that the protester brought up, were um, Mike felt were made the process maybe not so much illegal, but not as as clean as it should have been, and he just felt that it's probably a better idea, better notion to, to go out and rebid these two locations. Okay, I have another question. Will will this uh, conversations or discussions that you had with the people that protested is that going to give them an advantage with a bidding in any way? No, no, ma'am. Uh, we didn't give out any prices, and that's what the bid is going to be based on, is, is uh, price um, per, per year. 
in the bid format, the price, every, everything from this point on, if it becomes a bid, is public information. So whoever bids, if we go out for bid up front, as the bids are open here, there will be public information, and whoever bids can then view the other vendors' bids. They can act. That they can actually ask for copies of the bids before they leave this room. Well, my question was, I wanted to make sure that, that the people protesting will not have an advantage because of their discussions. I don't know. I'm just asking you. In no, your opinion, they don't. No, ma'am. And it was, it was one vendor protesting, which was Mrs. Gentry. Commissioner, um, and, uh, Commissioner Tamayo, the whole debriefing conference and the whole protest only involved her actual proposal that she submitted. Okay. She, she could not ask any questions on any other proposals that were submitted, and so it's very limited. When we go through the debriefing conference, um, it gives the protester a chance to question the evaluators on why they scored her proposal the way they did. And from that point, what information she gets from the debriefing conference, she can then write her protest and, and, and base whatever issues she has in, in that protest, and that's what she did and submitted to Mike Forbes. And as, well, she, protests, I, as she protests, legal is present as well as the evaluation committee. I just wanted to be reassured that that didn't happen. <coughs> so we're looking at not going out for RFPs like we did in the past, but going out we're for going bids. Bid. And what are we going to do in the future? Are we going to mix them? I asked that question last last week when this was right. discussed. With Delvia, she felt that this from now be the on it should be going out for and bids. And that's problematic than we faced in the past. And we're, more than anything, we're just trying to find a way to improve our situation. We know this is difficult for the court. It's certainly difficult for us. It's difficult for the vendors that spend a lot of time and effort in this. Uh, we don't need to have these problems reoccur. So we're trying to find a way to make improvements and to make life easier for all of us. Eliminate the problems. That exactly. <clears throat> Any further discussion? Do I hear a motion? The, the other three weren't protested, just these two out of the five. She factors. protested on these two locations, that's correct. And were those the only two locations that she owned? Do I hear a motion of any kind? It's, it's a little bit awkward. Yeah, I, I, it is it's very hard. Well, the we either we, we do or we don't. So. So what happens if uh, we don't? If we take no action. If we take no action. Then I would have to notify Mrs. Gentry and... and but I didn't hear Mike. I would have to notify Mrs. Gentry along with legal, and then we would wait for uh, our next we response. Got one. Right. Which what I imagine that? would be... She would have to go. She would submit it to the auditor, and it would probably come back whatever well, the auditor says, and it would probably come back to the commission court in the end. So then it's just a matter of rejecting the bids is what she's requesting. Right. And rejecting then doing it all over again. It would allow everyone the same opportunity a second time, as well as possibly someone else that may not have submitted the previous time. Have we, have we already skipped one step? If Delvia, you said that it should have gone to Mike and then the no, auditor this is and then Mike. to us. This is the know, first this step. Is Mike. Mm -hmm. But then the auditor and then to us? Yes. And the auditor hasn't made any decision yet? Not yet. It hasn't been sent to the auditor yet. Because she has that. Mike has to then, this is Mike's recommendation. If you don't go along with Mike's recommendation, he's going to send a letter to Ms. Gentry letting her know. If she's not happy with that, it still then has to, then she'll submit it again to the auditor. And then the auditor comes back with a response. And if the auditor goes back to you, you guys to, to send to recommend something and if you do not agree with that it goes back to her and then she's going to come back the final is, is the commissioner's court and if you disagree and, and do not want to go out and you think that the process was fine the way it was done then 
the award that you made stand? Are any of the parties in with this item here today? <laughs> yes. yes. I mean, do they wish to tell us something, maybe to enlighten us? They don't have a problem. They're not. They're the ones that it was awarded to. They didn't make the protest. What's that? They, they just participated. They didn't They're not protesting. The protest. They're the ones that were awarded the. Well, I, I say awarded. The, in the, I think in the back is the people awarded. that protest. Well, Somebody here from Gentry? I don't know anybody. Who's, I'm, I'm Judge, Commissioners, um, my name is Cole Bowers. Um, I'm here not representing Ms. Gentry, but uh, in her interest, uh, I manage her businesses. Um, more observing the meeting and find out what happened. I really am not prepared with anything. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, I, I, I have. believe Mrs. Gentry wanted to be here, but her husband had surgery this this week. I believe she's taking care of him up in the Houston area, so she couldn't make it. Mike, so the people that that had participated to begin with now will be told to rebid. Exactly. And, and this time, I believe the, the, the actual requirements are much more rigid and well explained than they were previously. So the I'm other trying... contracts in the original RFP have been awarded and approved and everything. That's correct. And so the... the rest of the five? Yes. yes. Yes, sir. So the only reason why these are here is because of the protest. Correct. That's correct. Which was part of the process of the Which RFP. Which is part of the process, and it's, it's as stated in the instructions to the bidders. So we don't have much of a choice. We have to determine whether the, the proposal process was somehow flawed, and, and I think that's why we're here. Okay, that's, it's, it's really not that difficult to, to understand. Um, she's saying, and I'm assuming what she's saying is that there was something wrong with the process and she's asking to basically to, to void it and start over again, is Correct. what she's saying. Correct. Sir. Correct? Yes, sir. So I guess you have a, somebody has to make a determination to tell us, do you believe that the process was flawed? Was there something that from our end that we did that was flawed, uh, which gives her some, some, you know, some support in that? And only you all know that, okay? So what I'm hearing from you is that you believe, well, tell me what you believe, first of all. I, I, agree, I agree with what you're saying, Judge, and I do believe there was some flaws in the, in, okay. in, in the proposal. All and right. I believe that's part of the reason now we've gone through a bid process. I believe that the proposal had several, several areas that probably could have been better addressed and fine-tuned in a better way to have all the vendors understand more clearly exactly what was expected. And keep in mind that I don't, a lot of these vendors really hadn't, go, we hadn't gone out for anything in quite a while. Correct. Years, okay? And what we tried to do this past year was open up the process for everybody, okay? So you're basically telling us then that the, the, and the other ones, there was no, if, if we would have had five protests, we'd be doing this all over for the five, correct? I believe that, that it would have been best to do it for the, the others. And I believe the only difference between this and the others is they chose not to protest okay. at the time. So in your opinion as, as, as our purchasing agent, do you believe that this process was flawed? I do, yes. Okay. Well, if that's the case, I don't think we have any choice but to reject the RFP um, because if, if it does end up in some kind of a, you know, Legal legal issue he's a witness basically for the for the plaintiff uh, so hearing this then I would entertain a motion to as much and I don't think that I like it but I think you're telling us that the process was not what it should have been it was flawed some protested so now we got to move forward is that correct well the, the, the only issue there judge is that there were three other contracts that have exactly. been signed and awarded already. But there were no protests. Well, 
That's it correct. It was exactly the same That's right. process. That's right. the use. same way. That's if right. If it was flawed for one, it was flawed for all five. That's correct. So no and, one and, does, and does this action allow those that didn't get an award from the other three contracts, I think two of them had more than one bidder out of the three that were awarded, does that allow those that didn't get a contract to now come and say, you know what, we were shortchanged? Well, and I, I, would, I, I would agree with you, but, but I believe there's, that there's a time frame in, in which you can file a protest. Um, yeah, and I'm aware of that. So that, I mean, I, mean I, don't, I don't know. I mean, the other option is, you know what, we just can them all and go out for bids on every single one all over again. Because I, I agree with you. If, if, if this was flawed, then they were all flawed. So, but that's not on, that's not on, on this agenda for today. If, if one of you all want to put that item on the agenda for the next meeting to, to do that, then we better get with legal and see if we can actually do that because we have a contract in place. Uh, so, um, but that's not before us today. Before us today is, is this item and we have to act on this item. And if we need to place something in executive session because of potential problems, then we put that for next week. And, uh, but as of now, this is what's before us now. Well, after hearing the recommendation from purchasing, I would move that we go ahead and reject the RFP for locations five and six. Okay, that was moved by Commissioner Gatsa. And solicit bids. And solicit bids for approval. Do I have a second? Second. Any further discussion? I'd like to, uh, and I don't know how many others submitted uh, our RFPs for five and six, but I want to apologize to them because they're going to have to come back and uh, and, redo. and redo. And so, you know. But we're just trying to make it fair. I know. But that doesn't take away the fact that it's going to uh, cause them more work. Time and energy. Time and energy, yeah. yeah. Money. They had a they motion. They had already even started uh, to buy their inventory. And by the same token, um, the Gentries had had an ongoing contract, and so it makes it very, very difficult for us, you know, because either way we go, we're going to hurt somebody. Um, I don't know what the best answer to this is, but uh, are you going to put up another a motion, Commissioner Tamayo? Did you have something else? No, there's a motion to second. There's oh, there's already a motion to second. How long Two. will it take to uh, prepare bids and get them out? Because we've got the season coming up yeah. to us. Yeah, and that's part the of the solicited bids. Right. Well, how long is it going to take to get the bids out, get them advertised, get the people bid, time to respond? due on February 18th. To to be back to us, February 18th. Correct. We've, we've had contracts for these two locations, right? Already, in the past. Would you mind giving me at least the last two years operations on these two locations mm -hmm. that we're giving so much time to, as far as year-end reports for what's available in regards to rents and in regards to uh, concession percentages that were paid sales. for them? I, I would appreciate that, Javier, sure. Because all that is tracked, am I correct? Yes, yes. Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Item 16, consideration possible action to solicit bids for the beach snack concession and Dubuis Park. We pulled item 16 out. Well, that, that went, uh, let's see, I'm sorry. Let's take a look at this. No, I thought it was 19. The same. This is location. Oh, yeah. This oh, is, yeah, can you enlighten us on that? Commissioner, this, this, is, this is a new bid, right? That's correct. Okay, so this one shouldn't have been pulled out, really, unless someone wants to talk yeah, about it separately. Right. Okay, do I hear a motion to approve item 16? So moved. moved by Thank Commissioner you. Wood, second by Commissioner Tamayo. Any further discussion? All those in favor, sir, by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, item carry. Item 19, consideration approval of service agreement concerning Cameron County Emergency Communication 911 District. My only question was, was just the timeliness of this contract, why we're, we're approving it now, and it goes back almost a year. I spoke with, this, um, with the sheriff, and he sent me to his 911 person. His name is Carlos Acevedo, and, and um, he explained to me is that this is a training program 
that 911, the emergency board, wanted the dispatchers to be trained in all types of emergencies to be able to handle if they got one for like, you know, from a fire and not just law enforcement. And 911 would agree would agree to pay for the training. And if you know, if one of the dispatchers had to go and cause the other one to have overtime, that's part of the of the money that they they agreed to to um, give to Cameron County. I went ahead and talked to Brian Janice, who's the attorney for the board, and he, he told me that what had happened was the training went ahead, but the board came up with the agreement that they wanted an agreement to, to have the county sign in order to pay for the training, and they approved it in December, and they just got it to us. So, so we got to approve it retroactive back to May. Right, so now, that we can get paid for the training that they've already taken. Okay, is this just a one-shot deal? It's a one-shot deal right now. They're looking at maybe doing it again. Okay, you so there's so there's no term on this contract? There's no what? There's no term. It, it's supposed to end at the end of this Mar of March, but I, I've spoken to Brian and Carlos Acevedo and they said all the training has been done. And so the board is just waiting for this to be signed so they can pay, Cameron, okay. reimburse Cameron County. Judge, the only comment I have is on my backup information for this item, I was missing page one, three, five, seven, possibly nine or ten. It was an incomplete document. Yep. And I just checked with Commissioner DeMaio, and she also has an incomplete document. Mine is incomplete as well. That's why I asked you what the so term was, like, because I didn't see the term anywhere on I'd here. I'd like to see a contract, you know. This, this was on, I believe, last week. Yeah, but it was incomplete. No, yeah. la last week was yeah. Last were, week was complete, but the dates were all were squirrely. Here, this is the explanation. But that can we? Um, do you want to approve this subject to that, or you just want to table it for another week and bring a complete? I have a complete document. Yeah, but no one, no one got it. Okay, no, none of us got it. Okay, let me ask them, let, let me ask again. Let's table this item and bring a complete document for the next for the next meeting. Here, motion to table. So moved. Moved by Commissioner Benavides. I'm by Commissioner Gatza. All those in favor, signify by, by saying aye. Aye. Any aye. opposed? Item carries. Uh, item 22, budget amendments, line item transfers, and our salary schedules. Have you had? Uh, judging commissioners, uh, I left some budget amendments uh, in front of the interview earlier. Um, just line item transfers between line items <clears throat> in several departments. Uh, if you have any specific questions. Are there any to questions it? on item 22? Do I hear a motion to approve? So moved. moved by Commissioner Agassa. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor, signify by, by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Approval of claims. Anything on claims? Anybody have any questions on claims? Rob, you have some extra ones? Do I hear a motion to approve claims as presented? Moved. moved by Commissioner Benavides. Do I have a second? Second. By Commissioner Wood. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Please note my abstention on, on those two affidavits that I gave you, and I think Commissioner Gassa has I have an abstention one abstention as well. on warrant 00194558, I believe. Item 24, approval of minutes for January the 8th, 2008, and January the 15th, 2008. Have the court members had an opportunity to review the minutes? Are they ready for approval? Do I hear a motion to approve the minutes of the 8th and the 15th? John? I'm ready. You're Do ready. I hear a motion? Make the motion. Moved by Commissioner Wood, signed by Commissioner Gatza. All those in favor, signify by, by saying aye. aye. Any opposed item carries. Item 25, consideration approval of lowest quote for the canopy structure for the security wall project to Bowman Distributing Company. Do I hear a motion to approve the lowest quote? So moved. Moved by Commissioner Gatza. Do I have a second? Second. By Commissioner Wood. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Item 26, consideration approval of contract with Bowman Distributing Company for the security wall project. Do I hear a motion to approve the contract? So moved. moved by Commissioner Gatza. Do I have a second? Second. By Commissioner Benavides. Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Item 28, discussion and possible action regarding the selection of a consultant for improvements at the Cameron County Port Isabel Airport. Do I hear a motion to approve the, uh, the recommendation? What was the guy's name? KSA, KSA Engineer. KSA. And that, and that, uh, and that uh, firm got the highest uh, grading. Do I hear a motion to approve? So moved. Moved by Commissioner Gassan. Do I have a second by Commissioner Wood? Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Aye. Item carries. Last item, item 29, discussion and possible action regarding the county, state, and federal legislative agenda. David. Judge Commissioners, I'll try to be brief. Um, <clears throat> just a couple of annou few announcements. Again, Thursday, we've got the town hall meeting in Wislico on the I-69 um, Trans-Texas Corridor um, uh, project. That's going to be in Westlake at 
Um, we emailed some talking points and some notes to you all. Um, if you all need us to fax them or send them somewhere else, let us know. <clears throat> then on February the 5th, the uh, Senate Transportation and Homeland Security Committee and the Senate Committee on Finance have called this uh, meeting, joint meeting, to discuss the, uh, the transportation funding crisis and you know what's going on with that and, and TxDOT is supposed to be at that meeting um, trying to answer questions um, from the from the senators, <clears throat> state senators, and um, if anybody is interested in attending that meeting, we're going to try to attend um, that meeting on February the 5th, some Tuesday. <clears throat> this morning, Pete got a call from uh, GSA, the administrator, um, and they're trying to trying to um, fund some projects, um, trying to get rid of money, I guess. Uh, and so they asked if there was any projects that we had going on where we could use some money from GSA, General Services Administration. And so um, <clears throat> we we uh, put together a letter. As you know, we're working on the West Road project, and we need some money for the customs facility that is going to be uh, going to be at that location. It's it's a small facility because it's going to be for rail, you know, the, to uh, staff the the customs personnel at the rail bridge, but it's a significant, you know, amount. <clears throat> so we sent them a letter today. The judge sent them a letter today, asking for about a million dollars, and hopefully um, we'll get some positive feedback on that um, for funding the customs facility at the West Rail Relocation Project. Um, this Thursday is the deadline for um, Homeland Security to start implementing their. ID requirements at the international bridge crossings. Um, they're going to be asking for two forms of identification for everybody uh, coming across or going, you know, coming across into the, the states. And so, <clears throat> you know, we'll, we urge everybody to you know, make sure they have two forms of identification um, when they're crossing and going across. Now you're going to end up staying on the other side or a passport. Um, in we're we're um, public works are signed technician. Just one with a passport? Right. If if it's either it's either two forms of identification, a birth certificate and driver's license, or if you have a passport, then that, that that's good. That's enough. Now, for the first 60 to 90 days, my understanding is that they're going to be flexible. Uh, obviously, people are not going to be aware, um, and so customs is going to be flexible after that time frame. Um, if you don't have two forms of ID or your passport, then you're automatically going to be pulled over into secondary for a detailed inspection, and you're going to have to prove that you are a U.S. citizen. Well, my answer to that is not good to Mexico. Yeah. That's not good for the bridge system. <clears throat> yeah, no, true. it's not. Now, I was just going to say that our sign technician is putting, helping put up signs, making the citizens aware going into Mexico that they need to have two forms of identification. We're trying to help expedite that and alleviate as much problems as possible on our end. Pete, the person <clears throat> that has that uh, sign, that big sign out there, um, Mr. Cardenas, mm -hmm. is that who it is? Can we not start putting that out uh, so people that are crossing? Great idea, yes, we'll do, we can do that. Just so they can start being aware of what's going to be coming down. <clears throat> I mean, really and truly, a lot of publicity has been given to them, but you know how some people yeah. leave it to the end. But if we could get him to start putting that up, there would help. And I've met, um, I've met with Brownsville and Harlingen, and, and I'll meet with San Benito, and just to advise them that, you know, from what we can project, our revenues are are going to continue to decrease. So just put them on notice because I know that they also budget their bridge revenues just like we do. So. Um, said I've, I've met with Brownsville and Harlingen, and, and I'll meet with City Manager of San Benito later on this week. <clears throat> and then the last item is just a reminder: we're also we've got a travel item for the binational in El Paso, which is uh, February the 12th and the 13th. We'll do a presentation on that for two projects: the West Rail and the Veterans Bridge. <clears throat> just keep in mind that if if we're going to have more than three or more members to go that we, we have to post it. So I just need to know. 
I, I also passed out a, a list of projects that we started to put together um, for this coming year. And um, these are some of the projects that we submitted in the past um, and in the Brownsville area, Harlingen area, and San Manilo area, and then a couple of the other, other projects with regards to the realignment of the Gulf and the Coastal Waterway and the levy project and then our Veterans Hospital. Um, I know there's other projects that I'm going to include in here that Commissioner DeMaio has given me, given me a list of, of uh, roads that she wants. So we're going we're gonna to look at that and try to include as many as possible. Um, if there's any other projects that we've got out there. Um, in the past, we've included the, the Border Interoperable Communications Network. I, I don't have that in here. Um, but we can include it. You can always ask for money on that. Um, need to get an update on where we're at on that uh, system. <clears throat> and I don't have the Los Fresnos project. We just got 250,000 this last appropriation cycle, so we're at about 500,000 for them. So, and if if you want, we can include that as well um, this coming year. David, I submitted the list to you. Yes, um, um, any these questions? Are, these are projects that we submitted last year. The and only I, other one was the, the realignment of the, of the intercoastal waterway. Yeah. Remember that we've worked on in years past, it's, and it's, we've gotten some funding. Yes, it's in your. Um, Is that the GI support of you? Right. Okay. That's the. Okay. So that's we had a meeting um, last week with Mr. Friedman. Right. And um, <clears throat> the Corps of Engineers has been. Um, developing some ongoing studies with regards to what's feasible with uh, the realignment of the channel, whether you can go straight into the uh, navigation channel or if you need to go, go the current route, which is through the Long, Long, um, Long, Island. Long Island area. Have we utilized all of the monies that had been allocated already for the work that was to be done? Yes. The studies, yes. Okay, the studies are all done. Right. So now it's just a matter of determining which way to... Right. The recommendation, okay. um, we believe the recommendation of the Corps is not what the community wants. Um, the, the recommendation of the Corps is to continue, is to widen the channel and to continue going through the same area. But the community wants to uh, realign the channel and go straight into the chan navigation channel and and then take a left, take a right into the uh, B and D. So we're going to work with them on. <clears throat> there's a couple of issues that they brought up at the meeting we had last week with the judge, and we're going to work on that with them to to make sure that we're addressing, first of all, supporting their issue, and then um, uh, working on the bridge structure that they have there, um, and working with TechStot. Mario Jorge was in our meeting, and uh, we're going to be working with him to try to figure out how to best. Uh, look to re either replace that bridge, take over that bridge, or find another area where we can build a, a bridge. Do I hear a motion to acknowledge Mr. Garcia's uh, report? And just, uh -huh. This is a working document. You know, I'll, I'll be adding projects. Um, this is what we had last year. And so if there's any, you know, any other projects that you'll have, let us know. Moved by Commissioner Tamayo. Do I have a second? Second, second by Commissioner Garza. Any further discussion? All those in favor, stand by by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, item carries. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? So Moved by Commissioner Benavides. Do I have a second by Commissioner Gatza? All those in favor, stand by by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, item carries. God save this honorable court. <laughs>